Father, as we gather this morning, we praise you, we worship you. Father, I just pray this morning that you will touch every heart and every soul. Father God, for each of these that have come this morning and these on Facebook and these around the world that have joined in with us this morning. And Father God, they will worship you in spirit and truth. Father, this is your service. This is your day. And Father, we give it to you to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Worship.
God, for the day that you reached down and you saved our soul. Not that we deserved it, but God, because of your great love and your mercy. Lord, I pray this morning, those that are gathered here this morning, those that are watching by Facebook and YouTube, I just pray, oh God, that you would move in this place this morning. May your power be a real in this place. May you come and visit your people, oh God, for we need your help today. Thank you for your salvation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 
He is worthy to be praised. Amen. Oh, glory to God. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Oh, glory to God. Father, we thank you. We praise you. That, Father, you don't look at the outward man, but you search the hearts of men and women, boys and girls. Father God, you know the purpose you have for our life. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, that in these last days, your power is still the same as it was yesterday. And, Father, it will still be the same today and tomorrow. And, Father, you're going to do your work in the hearts of your people. Father, let us wake up and understand of that taste of your grace and your mercy. Father, I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you glory. In Jesus' precious holy name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. You can be seated. You at home can be seated. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, this song, I, I, I did not realize it, but goes right along with what God has uh, led me into this morning. In that last verse that they sing, it says, I've received nothing but goodness. I've received nothing but goodness from God. Come on, if I got what I deserved, come on, church. I've tasted and tested your grace. Amen. And that is what I want to talk to you this morning. Grace received is grace given. Amen. Grace received is grace given. Amen. I want you to understand something. We are living in the last seconds Amen. of time. And church, you can look all around you and we see all that is happening in the world. We see the economic struggle that is coming on this world and we know that it's all setting up for the Antichrist. We see the storms and we see the earthquakes and, and we see uh, uh, the, 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 the sexual uh, in, immorality and we see a sin abounding in every way. And Jesus told us in Matthew 24 that when you see these signs, it is the beginning of birth pains. Yes. And church has been going on for years and years, but it's worse than it's ever been before. Amen. We live in a day and time where sin is justified according to man, but it is not justified by the word of God. And I need us to understand, and, and I want to talk to you about grace this morning, and I want us to understand that that grace is that unmerited favor of God. God's grace is sufficient. As we receive that grace, we must give that grace. But I want to tell you something. Do not let anybody tell you that condoning sin is grace because that's not grace. We must stand as a church. We must stand as a people against sin. Sadly, in this day and time, too many of our uh, 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 ministers throughout the world, they're preaching a lot on love and, 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 and they're preaching a lot on, on a lot of things. But church, we must understand that the call today should be repent, 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 because Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back. And the way is narrow, and few there are that are on that path. And we must understand that the only reason we are on that path is because of grace. Amen. Would you stand here in the auditorium for the reading of God's Word? In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, listen to what the writer says. He says, pursue peace with all people. Amen. And I let that sink in for just a minute. Pursue peace with all people. That includes your enemy. 
That includes the one that judges you and comes against you. Amen. That includes the sinner and the saint. Pursue peace with all people. And not only pursue peace, but pursue holiness. Amen. Holiness is not a denomination. Holiness is a way of life for a Christian. Amen. For without which, without what? Without peace and without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Amen. That means no one will spend eternity with him. No one will live in his presence. He says, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of of God. So you got to remember that grace received has also got to be given. Amen. Listen, he says, unless anyone falls short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up. Woo! Bitterness springing up, causing trouble. And by this, many Many, he says, become defiled. Amen. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Child of God, maybe I should have changed the, the title of this sermon. Don't sell out. Amen. Don't sell out. In these last days, don't sell out your Christianity. Don't sell out your morals. Don't sell out that grace that is given unto you. Amen. Can we pray? Our Heavenly Father, as I come before you, I come with thanksgiving. I thank you for these that have gathered this morning in the sanctuary. I thank you for these that have gathered via Facebook and, and, and around the world this morning. Father, I thank you for those. Father, I can name quite a few states of, uh, uh, in the U.S. as people join us. And Father, I thank God for that. I thank you, Lord, that in these last days you kicked us out of the boat and you told us that we must go into all the world and spread the gospel. And Father, that is what this day and time is about. Father, time is short. And what we must do, we must do quickly. So Father, I pray this morning, hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Hide me behind the cross one more time, Lord. Anoint me with the power of your Holy Spirit one more time, Lord. Lord, let them not hear my voice, but let them hear your voice, Father. And Father, may we understand that your wonderful, amazing grace that you've given us, Father, we must also give to others. Amen. Now, Father, I praise you and I thank you. Your anointing, Lord, hide me behind the cross. In Jesus' name, amen, and you may be seated. I want us to look at this scripture, and I'm going to go through probably a lot of scripture this morning, but I want us to understand here what the writer was saying. He said, you've got to pursue peace and people. I, I, I've done two weddings in the past week at a funeral, but, but I, I, I want you to understand that what I told them in both of these weddings that love is a choice. Love is a choice. Not only do we understand that, but peace is also a choice. Forgiveness is a choice. Too many times we want to feel it before we give it. And we can't do that. Because we have to choose to forgive. We have to choose to love. We have to choose to give grace to people that, come on, don't necessarily deserve it. Asked us this question this morning. Did any of us deserve the grace that God gave us? Amen. No, we did not deserve the, God, the grace that God gave us. But because of that amazing grace, that song just said it. I've tasted of your grace. I have experienced your grace. I've experienced that grace that you've given to me. And I want to give it to somebody else. Amen. I want to give it to somebody else. I must pursue peace with all people in the world we live in today. Listen to me. Can, can
Can you not see today? We're seeing the total opposite of what Christianity is. We're seeing the total opposite of what heaven is. We're seeing discourse on every hand. We're seeing, and, and, and let me just warn you, Christians. Let me just, oh, I don't want to, let me get over here on my soapbox for just a minute, okay? Let me just warn you, Christians. Don't get caught up in a mask whether you agree with it or not. a hill of beans what you think. If you want to wear one, wear one. If you don't, don't. But don't judge somebody else. Church, the enemy's doing everything he can to divide and to conquer and, and, and to get us divided. And, 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 and we get caught up in I think this and I think this instead of showing grace. Amen. That unmerited favor that God showed us as, and, and, and received us into his kingdom. Come on, church. And we are living in a world today that people are not pursuing peace. And they're definitely not pursuing holiness. Amen. Holiness, as I said before, is not a denomination of holiness. It is a relationship. See, none of us are holiness. None of us are holy. I, I remember the scripture there where Jesus, where, where the man came to him and, 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 and said, a, a rabbi, good rabbi, good master. And what did Jesus say? Jesus turned around and said, There is none good but God. Amen. There is none good but God. And that is what we must understand. And, and, and that is where our holiness is not in our denomination. Our holiness is not in our version of the Bible. Our holiness is not in the things of this world. But our holiness goes back to that relationship that I've been trying to talk to you about for the past few weeks of God. God Jehovah. Yahweh, our Lord, our Savior, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And glory to God, it's not going to be long church. It's not going to be long world that we see Him face to face. Amen. And until then, we must pursue peace. We must pursue it with all people. We must pursue holiness. Without, no man will see the Lord. Without the holiness of Jesus Christ within us. Without the holiness of the power of the Holy Spirit within us. He says, look carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Don't fall short. Don't sell out to this world. Stand for the word of God. Amen. We show grace. See, we live in a day and time, if, if you're called a Christian, if you believe in this one called Jesus, then, then the world wants to call you a hater and a bigot and a racist and all of these things, which a child of God is none of those things. But they want to believe those things. Why? Because we don't stand for the sin that is in their life. We do not hate the person. We do not hate uh, 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 the color of their skin or uh, uh, whatever. We don't agree with the sin. Amen. Well, pastor, who are you to say what sin is? I'm nobody, but the word of God says what sin is. And that is what I shall stand upon. The word of the living God. Look at this. He says, lace any root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble. Christians, listen to me. Is there bitterness in your heart against somebody? Has somebody ticked you off? Has somebody, and, and that, that, that root of bitterness has sprung up within you, and, 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 and the grace which God has given you, you can't show it to them. Come on, I'm stepping on some toes. I want my boots this morning. I'm stomping this morning. Amen? Amen. Because, see, here's what the writer says. He said that root of bitterness will come up in us. Y'all ever noticed anything? If you're going to pull a weed or you're going to pull something, and, and you know, if, 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 you got, if you're working in the yard, you like to work in the yard, I don't care how much mulch you put down, a weed will find a way. Amen. And the devil will find a way. Amen. That's why you always got to be. So when you pull that weed, what do you do? If you pull it and just snip off the top, what's going to happen? It's going to come right back up. 
And you see, we must understand. We must have, uh, we must go back to that scripture. Search me, O Lord, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Search me, O God, if there be any bitterness in me. And you know, understand this child of God. Understand this child of God at home. A lot of times you say, well, Pastor, I didn't do any wrong. Pastor, it's not my fault. God didn't ask that. Was it his fault when he was nailed to the cross? Was he guilty when he was nailed to the cross? No. There's been many times in my life that I've been tested by the grace of God. Where people have talked about me and people have ridiculed me and people have lied on me. And you know what I did? I'll tell you what I did. It rose up within me that I wanted to defend myself. And the Holy Spirit said, hush. Hush. I remember one instance in my life where, where, where and, and, and this was a good Christian. And, and, and I said, Lord, what do I do? And, 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 and the Lord told me, he said, go to that person and apologize. I said, apologize? What did I do? God said, I didn't ask anything, but you do what I, have, I told you. Amen. I went to that person and I said, if I've done anything to offend you, if I've done anything, I'm sorry. Amen. And this person, which I did not know was upset with me, started accusing me of everything in the book. And I sat there with my jaw on his desk. I'm telling you this for a reason. And I didn't plan on going this way this morning. The Holy Spirit knows what he's doing. I sat there with my jaw on, his desk, on the desk. And, and all of this started coming up within me. And I went to speak the words. Now some of you are going to get upset with me about what I'm getting ready to say. But I can't help it. The Holy Spirit told me shut up. Because I'm a little hard here. Hush don't work with me too good. Oh pastor the Holy Spirit don't talk that way. Well pastor, whatever. I'm not going to get in that way. And I'm sitting there and I'm having a conversation with the Holy Spirit. Don't hush, be still, and know that I am God. Amen. See, God didn't tell you to go and ask for forgiveness and give grace. And you expect to receive grace back because you won't always get it back. Amen. You just got to do your part. That's, right. That's just free this morning. That's just free this morning. See, when we miss grace, things become toxic and poisonous in our life. Right. That root starts growing in our life. Now, now y'all ever y'all ever taken and put down in your flower beds a, a, a paper or plastic and then put mulch on top of it? And later on you go back and you pull it up, and what's all underneath that, that paper? There's roots going everywhere because that root is going to find a way. That root is going to try to, to, to find a way to go somewhere. That's why you've got to pull it out by the root. You've got to dig down deep and deal with the issue and the problem in your life and show grace to the one that you don't want to show grace to. I'm just telling you the truth this morning. Religion, religion without grace is poisonous. Amen. Religion without grace, there ain't no Jesus. Right. A relationship, a relationship without grace is poisonous. A relationship without grace, there's no forgiveness, there's no love, and there's no Jesus. Right. A church, woo, a church without grace is poisonous. A church without grace is judgmental. A church without grace is prideful. A church without grace has no forgiveness. A church without grace has no love. A church without grace has no Jesus. Amen. A heart with no grace is poison. Because a heart with no grace is judgmental. A heart with no grace is prideful. A, a heart with no grace has no forgiveness. A heart with no grace has no love. And a heart without grace has no Jesus. Amen. You got to let him lead you. Let him direct you. 
You know how many people I've, I've talked to and counseled with over the years, and the one thing I've always told them is this, forgiveness is not a, a feeling. If you wait to forgive when you feel like it, you'll never forgive. Can I ask you a question? Jesus laid on the cross before he was being, while he was being crucified, his arms pulled out of the sockets and stretched and nails being driven into his hands. What did he say? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Amen. You know, child of God, what does the Bible tell us? We fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. You're not fighting against that person. You're fighting against the devil within that person. Woo! Asking a judge, no, I'm not, because you'll know a tree by the fruit it bears. Amen. And if they're coming against you, it, it's not them. It's the devil working in them. Do you not understand what you see in the world today? And let me just go there, because y'all know I'm just point blank honest. I don't care how much money they give to charity. I don't care how much food they give to charity. I don't care all of those things that they supposedly do in, in, in supposedly love. If they can't love me as a child of God and for what I stand for, then it is not love. It is not of God. It is of Satan. Amen. Thank you, Sister Lee. God's grace is not limited to our understanding and it's not limited to our treatment of it. Grace is available to anybody that wants it. God's amazing grace is available to anybody that wants it. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heaven laden, and I shall give you rest. Just like that second song they sang, it doesn't matter. Church, it is time. If we've ever lived in a time that it's time to break down our barriers of denomination and our barriers of race and our barriers of everything that has divided us and listen and understand, are you a child of God or not? Amen. That's the only division. The only division is either you are saved, you're a child of God, you're born again because you asked Jesus to come into your life and be your Lord and Savior. Or you're still under that pride and under that unforgiving grace. No grace. We must understand that. Let's look at Galatians 2 and 20. If you're a child of God, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. How can you forgive somebody who's done you wrong? How can you show grace to somebody who's done you wrong? You can't, but he can. Amen. You can't, but he, through you, you can do all things. Amen. Through Christ who strengthens you. No longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. You see, all of this with the virus and all of this, God, did, did you, have you noticed how God, now listen to me, you can, you can disagree with me if you want to. I don't care if you're wrong. <laughs> have you noticed how God put everything to a stop? No church, no ball game, no theater, no mall, no shopping limited, everything. Stay at home. Isolate. Why? Because God is knocking at the doors. Our people's heart. And Satan's over here trying to divide. He's trying to divide over the medicine, whether we should take this medicine and whether that medicine's any good. We're divided over masks. We're divided over the six foot. We're, listen, Church, quit, 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 quit arguing over stuff that don't matter. Amen, what matters is who's dying and going to hell. Right. What matters Amen. is who's living in Christ and who's not living in Christ. Right. Come on. And they listen to me. Listen to me. Your attitude and all of that is not showing grace. I'm stomping on my own feet this morning. I, I, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Anybody guilty at home, say amen. Anybody guilty in the house, say amen. Listen, 
He says, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. It is not I. But it is Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, let me jump to Ezekiel chapter 36. He said, and I will give you a new heart. I will take out that hard heart, that heart of bitterness, that heart uh, uh, of stone. Listen to me, good church, because I need you to understand something. God is getting the bride ready Amen. to go. Amen. And we must wake up. We must wake up and understand it's not about church in the sense of just going to a building. Fail not to assemble thyself together. I'm glad we're able to get back to that. But understand, you are the temple of God. And the temple of God is within you. And that love and that grace and that forgiveness must be within you. Amen. He said, I'll give you a new heart. And the new spirit I will put within you. How do you know if someone's got Jesus? You'll see grace. You'll see the love. He said, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I'll take that old bitter heart of yours and I will revive it. I'll do CPR on it and I will start pumping it as a, as a child of God and you shall be born again and you shall start, start showing grace and you will start showing love and you will start showing forgiveness. Not because of you, but because of who lives within you. Do you hear me? He said, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and be careful to obey my rules. Amen. Christian, listen to me real good. <laughs> listen to me real good. Because we're living in a world today that calls Christianity <clears throat> And there's too wide of a spectrum with that word Christianity in the world today. If you're a child of God, then you're going to follow Him. You're going to believe Him. Amen. And you're going to live according to the standard of the Word of God. Amen. Now listen, I didn't say you were perfect. I didn't say you wouldn't make mistakes, but you will. Every last one of us have. Amen. But what do you do? Do you waller in the mud? No, you pick yourself up. You ask forgiveness and you go forward. Or you pick yourself up and you go to that brother and sister in Christ and say, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have acted that way. Forgive me. And you go forward in Christ. Amen. Do you hear me this morning? He said, you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. And again, you can disagree with me. And again, I can't help you wrong. But don't call yourself a Christian and say that you're a Christian and you still believe all these other religions will get you to heaven. Amen. Well, Pastor, you're not showing grace. I am showing grace because grace is Jesus Christ. And there's no other way to grace except through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to receive grace but through Jesus Christ. And God's amazing grace, Jehovah. Ah, Titus 2, 11 through 15. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. The grace of God has been revealed, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's right. <laughs> And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. Amen. Amen. Listen to what the word says. See, a lot of preachers don't want to preach on sin and they don't want to preach on hell. But we need to hear it. Amen. Because the good, good father that we serve is a father that loves his children. And a father who loves his children disciplines his children when they do wrong. Amen. He said this. 
He says we're instructed to turn from our godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom. Amen. Amen. You better have God's wisdom. God is the beginning of wisdom. The word is the beginning of wisdom. Not, not, not that, that professor at the college. Not that, 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 that book that was written by, by, by that atheist. Or, 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 no, it is the word of God. Amen. He said we should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. Amen. Amen. I ain't lost my way. But you see, the true test has come. The true test has come. Because so many people were so used to their routine of going to church and doing their little church thing once a week or twice a week. Praise God, some people even came three times a week. They're doing it. And now that there has been no church, see, church is not the building. Church is in here. Amen. You can have church at home. You can have church in your vehicle. You can have church at work. No, Pastor, I can't eat. Yes, you can. Glory to God. You might scare a few people, but that's okay. Come on, people. See, understand this. God's grace is beyond comprehension. That unmerited grace, but don't take that grace for granted. Don't abuse God's grace. Amen. Amen. He said, you need to live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day. Amen. When the glory of our great God, Jehovah Yahweh, and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. Amen. There is coming a day right. when the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen. I could not help but think the other day I was out at the cemetery in Wilmington doing a funeral outside at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and the heat index, I know it had to be over 100 degrees. And water was flowing off of me. But I could not help but as I sat there and I looked at Brother Wilbur Cheshire, one of our founding members of this church, charter members of this church, this church is here today because of him and his family and their dedication. But I couldn't help as I tried to, to step back underneath the shade tree. Anybody say amen for a shade tree? Amen. And all I had was my mask. And I wasn't wearing my mask. I was... My master came, I sweat right. Because I forgot my sweat. But I couldn't help but stand back. And I kept looking at his coffin. Going, Lord, could this be the second? Could this be the day? Could this be the time? Because that's how close I think we are to the rapture of the church. Amen. I'm just sitting there looking at Thinking at any moment in time. And then I started looking around the cemetery, thinking at any moment in time, the dead in Christ could rise. Amen. And we that remain shall be called up to meet him in the middle of the air. And forever shall we be with our Lord. Why? Because of grace. Amen. Not, not because of me, not because of my works, not because of anything I've done, but because of the grace of God. He said he gave his life to free us, free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. Amen. I have not lost my way. I'm just trying to choose my word. We live in a day and time where everybody's got time for everything but God. Amen. Everything but God. And church, we better wake up. Because yes, yes, you can get to heaven without works. 
the thief on the cross, he went without words. But I do know, and I believe it's in James, he said faith without works is dead. Amen. Because if grace is in you and the grace of God is in you, you're going to want to do something for Jesus. So there's another test to see if, if, if you're living for Jesus like you should. Because you're going to want to do for him. You're going to want to worship him. Not when you feel like it, but just because he's God. I told you, my son brought home that husky. And I have to walk him most of the time. I'm not going to go there. Grace I'm preaching on, and I need to practice it. Some of you all understand. But when I put that dog on that leash, and the blue, beautiful eyes look at me, and he just smiles. <laughs> I can't help but see God. And then as I go outside and I'm having to walk in my yard because I got to take him out and I see the trees and I see the, the clouds or I see the moon and I see the stars. There's a lot of times if you're driving by my house you're going to see me walking around with my hand up lifting worshiping and praising him while I'm walking the dog. The dog thinks I'm crazy anyway, so I ain't worried. <laughs> Why? Because he's worthy to be praised. Amen. He's Amen. worthy to be praised. Amen. And if you don't think he's worthy to be praised, if you have a Christianity that you think that God owes you something, then you ain't got Christianity. Because right. he don't owe you nothing. Right. But he gave you everything. Jesus he gave his life to us to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. You must, listen, I'm almost through, stay with me just a few minutes longer. You must teach these things and encourage the believers. Amen. This is what he said encourage who? Believers. The believers to do them. Amen. Why? Because we all get tired. We all get weary. Some of us have gotten a cave fever. We've been trapped in their houses and, 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 and everything else. And we need somebody to encourage. Pick up the phone. Shoot somebody a text. Encourage one another. Teach one another. When somebody comes to you and says, Billy Bob did this against me, and Jenny Jane did this against me, blah, 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 blah. If you, and, and somebody, you want to get them off the phone, just say, have you shown them any grace? Have you shown them, oh, i got to go, the phone's ringing. Bye. Click. Okay. Try it. I have a lot of people who's come to me wanting to tell me all this, and I start talking to them about Jesus. Well, it's good talking to you, Pastor. Good to see you, Pastor. See you later. Because people don't want to hear what they need to do. They want you to take their side and say, well, that person is no good and that person. No, I got to move on. He says, teach these things and encourage the believers to do them. You have the authority to correct them when necessary. Don't let anyone disregard what you say. Yeah. As a child of God, he gives you that authority. And you don't do it in, in, in hatred. You don't do it mean, but you do it in the love of Christ. Amen. One more scripture in Ephesians chapter 2 and, and verses 3 through 10. And, and I want to read this from the Amplified Version because I love the way they put it. Among these, the unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh. Our behavior governed by sinful self. Anybody ever notice that we live in a selfie world? Y'all know what a selfie is? <laughs> Got to take a selfie. People riding down the road, taking a selfie. People going all around taking a selfie because we live in a selfish generation. Amen. He says, 
include indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit. And the impulsive of the sinful mind, we were by nature children under the sentence of God's wrath, just like the rest of mankind, but God. But God, being so rich in mercy, in grace, being so rich because of his great and wonderful love with which he loved us, even when we were, King James says, sinners, spiritually dead. Amen. And separated from him because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive Amen. with Christ. For by his grace, his, his undeserved favor and mercy, you have been saved from God's judgment. Why? Why? Because of His grace. If He's going to give it to us, shouldn't we give it to others? Amen. Come on, church. Amen. And He raised us up together with Him. This is why I say, this is why I say, and I've said this before, I've said it all my life as a pastor, and my, my wife, baby, will back me up on this. I get so tired of, of people putting up walls of denomination, or calling it a white church, or a black church, or a Hispanic church. No, we are the church. Amen. Amen. Together. Amen. No matter. And we should not separate ourselves or divide ourselves. Amen. Right. Right. Because glory to God is the bride of Christ. It's going to be of every nation, every tribe, and every language, every skin color. Amen. Every denomination Amen. of those that trust in God. Listen, he said, and he raised us up together with him when we believed. And he seated us with him in heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. And he did this so that in the ages to come, he might clearly show the immeasurable and unsurpassed riches of his grace. Woo. Of his grace. For in the kindness toward us in Christ Jesus by providing for our redemption. For it is by grace God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ that you've been saved. You've been saved by grace. Amen. Actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. And this salvation is not of yourself. Not through your own effort. But it is the undeserved, gracious gift of God. Amen. Not as a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law. Let me stop right there. There's a lot of you that still struggle with sin. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Jealousy, hatred, bitterness, envy, strife, all of those sin. Whatever it is, every last one of you has your kryptonite. Y'all know what kryptonite is. Y'all know Superman. Superman could do anything and everything, but if kryptonite came, he was weak. What's your kryptonite? Because we all have it. Amen. Amen. And we must understand we can't overcome it, but the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit can. Amen. Listen Amen. to me. For we are workmanship, his own master work. Brother Chris, come on. I'll preach all day. A work of art. You're a work of art. Created in Christ Jesus. Reborn from above. Spiritually transformed. Renewed. Ready to be used. Somebody get this in the Amplified Version. For good works which God prepared for us beforehand. Taking paths 
which he prearranged and made ready for us. Listen. Passion, purpose, praise. Passion, purpose, praise. God's got purpose for each and every one of your lives. No matter who you are, no matter where you are. You're overseas, God opened doors and used you. You're in Connecticut, God opened doors and used you. You're in Florida, you're in Texas, you're in California. Glory to God, even if you're in Washington, D.C., if you let it, God can use you. Amen. As they play quietly, I want to give you seven things grace is. Grace is powerful enough to erase your guilt. Powerful enough to erase your grief. Grace is big enough to cover your shame. Grace is real enough to heal that relationship with somebody. Grace is strong enough to hold you up when you are weak. Grace is sweet enough to cure that bitterness within you. Grace is satisfying enough to deal with your disappointment. And grace is beautiful, beautiful enough to redeem your brokenness. Aren't you thankful for grace? Aren't you thankful for grace? I want you to stand inside the sanctuary at home, around the world, stand wherever you are. This is church. And I want you, as they sing this song, I want you to think about the amazing grace God has given you. And I want you to ask God one thing, Lord, is there somebody that I'm not showing grace that I need to show grace? Because there's a scripture in the Bible that tells us if you have all of your brother and you come to the altar, leave your gift and go get it right with your brother, then come back to the altar. you got to show grace because he's given you.
this amazing grace. If you do not know this one called Jesus, it doesn't matter who you are. He died for you. It doesn't matter what you've done. He loves you. Well, preacher, nobody can love me. Yes, he loved you before you were even born. He loved you and forgave you even when you were a sinner. All he wants you to do is to believe. Believe on him that he's a son of God. Believe on him that he died and he rose from the grave. And believe on him that he has the power to take away your sins and make you a child of God. Not because you deserve it, not because I deserve it, but because of grace. Let that grace in this morning and let that grace transform your life. If that's you this morning, I just want you to bow your head wherever you are and I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. My Heavenly Father, I receive your grace. Father, thank you for your grace. Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your Son. I believe that He is the door to you. And I believe that He died for my sins. I receive your grace today. I thank you for your grace today. I praise you for your grace today. And Father, now help me to be the child of God that you called me to be. Father, you know why you created me. And all my past and all that I've gone through is under the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, you will take that and what the devil did for evil, you will use it for good. Father, may I touch your life. May I show your grace. If you prayed that prayer and you believed in your heart as those tears flow down your face this morning, that grace of God is in you. He loves you. The Bible says angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner coming home. That's how important you are to the God of the universe. Now I want us to pray. I want us to pray. There's many on our prayer list here at the church. Our prayer list is on our Facebook page at chadburnph.org. I encourage you to pull that page up and pray for those people. Also, those I sent out on the prayer text. We have many this morning. I can't go through them all. I did receive this that uh, Brother Freddie's brother-in-law had a stroke this morning. Brother Bobby... Huffelstein, Huffstephan, he had a stroke this morning. Let's hold him up in prayer. There's many of us this morning. And maybe you out there this morning, the Lord has dealt with you with this sermon over grace. And there's somebody that God just keeps putting in the forefront of your mind. And you keep pushing them to the back of your mind saying, oh no, oh no, not that person. God's putting it into your mind for a reason. Go to that person. Show them grace. I didn't say they'll show it back to you. But you can have that peace. Pursue that peace. Pursue that peace that I read to you in Hebrews. Because God will have you to have peace over that situation. If you're one of those people, I want you to pray. We pray for the sick and we pray for you. Father, right now, we pray for the ones that are sick. All of these on the prayer list. Father, there's those joining us right now at home this morning and around the world, Father, that are going through struggles and trials and situations, physically, mentally, emotionally. Father, there's souls that are just tired in body and tired in spirit. Father God, as your word said this morning, I encourage them. I lift them up before you, Father. Strengthen them by your power, by your mercy, by your grace. And Father, I pray for that one that is dealing with that root of bitterness. Father God, I don't believe it's just one. I believe there's many this morning on the sound of my voice that is dealing with the root of bitterness. It has gotten them so entangled that 
they can't think of anything else. And the devil is using it to keep their mind off of you. Father, let them pull that. No, forgive me, Father. Let them allow you to pull that bitterness out of them and replace it with your grace. Now, Father, we give it to you. If you're one of those people, say, Father, I give it to you. I give it to you. I'll do what you tell me to do. In Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. Amen. For those on Facebook Live and YouTube, we thank you for being with us at CPHC Ministries. A couple of announcements. One, tonight at 6 p.m. on uh, the NCIPH website, is our missions service. I encourage you to uh, go to the NCI, uh, NCIPH website uh, and, and join us with the mission service at 6 o'clock. I encourage you to give to missions. Uh, we're looking to give our missions offering in just a few weeks. If you want to give to missions, now is your time. Remember that your time and offerings you can give through Easy Time, you can give it through the P.O. Box 461, Whiteville 24872. Or you can, uh, notice here, you can put it in the box as you leave out. We love you. Thank you for being with us. 